very gracious in tone, uh, seemed almost chipper, almost cheerful, almost like he had a weight off of his shoulders. And I'm sure for the last few weeks of that campaign, it was probably like dragging an you know, anchor. He kind of signaled in that interview I did with him over at Labor Day. He was even then talking in sort of very open terms about, yeah. you know, I've enjoyed yeah. this time as prime minister. I'm proud of my time. It almost sounded like he was ready for defeat at that point. Well, we've talked about this before, that it was hard to see how you got to a Conservative victory from the beginning of this campaign. They had a ceiling of 35% that they were ever going to get. And unless the, the vote split perfectly on the other way, they were not going to form the government. So he may have seen, as many of those departed cabinetsters may have seen the writing on the wall fairly early. Uh, on the other hand, this is entirely self-inflicted. I mean, they didn't run a very good campaign. It was spiritless. It, it didn't much, not much in the way of a platform, etc. But the conditions for this were laid out in the years previous to this. I do think a lot of it had to do with a style of politics, a style, an approach to government that was overly centralized, overly harsh, uh, you know, overly autocratic. And a lot of the message that Justin Trudeau was bringing was very much the opposite of that. It was much more upbeat, much more cheerful, much less uh, uh, emphasis on, you know, controlling and fear, etc. And you reap what you sow. It's, it's, this did not have to happen. This was, they were not condemned, as we've said before, by the economy. Uh, they beat themselves. You know, he, he kept saying through the campaign, he said it in that interview, and he was saying in his ads by the end of it, it's not about me. Yeah. Where, in fact, it was about him. <laughs> yes, but when you look at the popular vote, he still wasn't rejected massively by the people who gave him a majority. It is only that finally the vote that did, never wanted him found a home to coalesce in. Otherwise, he could have won on the splits again. I'm not sure he would have been well served with a minority government uh, this time around, not only because of the opposition, but because he had always brought his party forward in every election. This would have been yes. the first sign that he was a spent force. It would have been really difficult to run that government. I listened to that speech, and I, it seemed to me that he had not prepared another speech for tonight. No. no. Uh, I think he's known for some time. Yes. You know, there's, uh, you know, probably more than a few days. We're talking a few weeks. Uh, he seemed, I think, convinced of the direction this was going in, Bruce. Well, I do think that he looked and sounded relieved. Um, but, I, you know, I look at him and I think, like Andrew and Chantel were saying, this wasn't foreordained. This, was, this didn't have to happen this badly for the Conservative Party. I can't recall a, a prime minister who seems less interested in the salesmanship part of politics than Stephen Harper. Um, yes, he put hundreds of millions of dollars of public money into advertising designed to get voters softened up. Yes, he had made sure that Pierre Polyev, you know, handed out billions of dollars in checks to families. They went through all of these things that should have given them a lift. But ultimately, the Prime Minister, Mr. Harper's problem was he was happy pitching 40% of the vote. And if you're never going to try to increase the share that you could get, if you're never going to reach beyond those people who say, yes, the one and maybe the only thing I care about is taxes or security. What we found in our last survey was that the number of people who said taxes and security were the top issue for them together was 10 percent. Failed to land that ballot question. He doesn't seem remorseful about that. He said he took credit for or he took responsibility for the failure, but it was a pretty quick acknowledgement that it well, was a failure. Let me throw something else on the table. They, you know, the Conservatives took a lot of heat for the last four years from people who did not like them, and, and, and that's putting it mildly, that they only represented 39% of the population, and therefore more than 60% were against them. Look at these numbers tonight. They were almost identical. The Liberals are at 40%. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, that's our electoral system, unfortunately. It not is our electoral another can system. Of worms. I don't think it was just the numbers, it was the style of government. And, uh, you know, I think this is not, I, I, you, you can't put this all just on personalities. This isn't just about the leadership of Harper, it was about the culture he created in the party, it was about the approach to politics and governing that they took with him at the top, no doubt. But I think this is an opportunity in a, in a sort of a way for the party to re-examine itself and go back to basics. What happened under this leadership was they decided they were going to minimize their actual substantive differences with the other parties. They weren't going to take any risks. They weren't going to unveil any big ambitious policies. It was all going to be small ball. And they replaced those big substantive differences with a lot of partisanship and with a lot of micro-targeting, et cetera, and, uh, and, and sort of amp up that side of things. I think they need to make the opposite mix, that, which clear people want a more positive type of politics, a more civilized type of discourse. But hopefully in, in the wake of that, they can also start talking about ideas again and about 
um, you know, challenging the opposition and making, the, I should say, the government now, uh, and putting forward positive alternatives rather than just this kind of nickel and diming. Chantal. It's not just the numbers. I think you best saw it in Elizabeth May's reaction tonight. She didn't have a good night. Uh, but you could tell that she was happy because there are more policy connections between the NDP, the mm -hmm. Green Party, and the Liberals than there ever were between any of those parties, really, uh, and, and the Conservatives. And that is why Justin Trudeau won, because it was so easy for so many new Democrats. I, I, your Blackberry, like mine, is probably filling up with people who voted NDP and who are partying. Uh, because they got the result that they wanted. So, so 40% for Justin Trudeau is not the same thing as 40% was for Stephen Harper, which was his maximum. Not on this night. No. Wait if it heads south. Let's, then it suddenly let's see in four important. years. Exactly. Rosie, you went on one in on this? Well, I agree with you. I think that, that this was not a surprise for Stephen Harper. I think that this had been signaled to him weeks ago by those around him that it was bad and it was getting worse. And I think that's why we saw some of those sort of desperate attempts towards the end, right, to bring in the Ford family, for instance, <laughs> and by the way, didn't pay off. They didn't win any of the Etobicoke's. <laughs> so even that wasn't enough for them. Um, and, and it may be too soon to cast our minds forward, but uh, it's going to be awfully interesting in the days ahead. All right, here's Justin Trudeau arriving in the Queen Elizabeth Hotel with his wife, Sophie, to uh, a cheering crowd, obviously, uh, an ecstatic crowd of Liberals, many of whom no matter what they thought at the beginning of this campaign, I'm sure those thoughts did not include a night where they were going to get 188 seats and form a majority government and that Justin Trudeau would become the 23rd Prime Minister of Canada. What will he have to say tonight? What is he going to tell this crowd?